Okay, so um, welcome everybody to this, uh, I don't know, spring morning in Cape Town. The sun is out, it's bright and uh, it's warming up. I wouldn't say it's too warm. Uh, we're in level one lockdown now, which is great. And we can get back to business. Um, so, you know, please let us know in the chat where you're calling from. I'm, I'm joined by Onita, who's also in Cape Town somewhere, uh, northern suburbs, I think. And Hans, who's in Austria, I hope. He's got a Vietnamese t-shirt on, but we're hoping you're in Austria this time. Absolutely. So um, welcome to the fourth edition of the Masterclass. Um, and obviously we've, we're really you know, looking forward to engaging with you. I think you know, we, we've, we've got uh, some exciting technology that we want to unpack and, and talk around, but we really want to also open this up to everybody to ask questions. This is the fourth in the series. So for those who've been here, for the, for the early parts. What we're gonna try and unpack is a, an app solution, uh, Cypex, which is a rapid application building tool for all organizations. Um, let me go through, here we go. I'm going through this too quickly. So I'm Ralph Fletcher, I'm the host um, from Topco. So as I, as I mentioned, I'll be introducing our two panelists are we doing some polls and Q and A's. Let's keep it positive and keep those questions coming. There is a Q and A chat in the, in the bottom of the screen. So let us, you know, so bring those questions. If you have any questions and we can answer them for you. Um, just to tell you quickly about Topco. So obviously we're a trusted network of top companies, startups, policymakers, academia, and decision makers in Africa. I think one of the posts for this event, we had over 1,100, like so it's clear that we're really getting the message out to the rest of Africa in in all countries I was really staggered the amount of countries that were interested in this so Topco obviously we look at the the top companies in South Africa we research top 10,000 companies and we look from you know Africa Tech Week to gender empowerment to performance top 500 companies and, and really you know this masterclass is aligned to Africa Tech Week and really the purpose is Africa transforming the world. And, and I think what we're seeing is that organizations are definitely employing technology and, and disrupting the way that they're doing business. Um, and so really how, how is your custom experience um, transforming to a digital new way? And how do you scale quickly, cost effectively with the skills that's needed to drive this change? Uh, Africa Tech Week was obviously mentioned as one, one of the top events for 2020 for startups. Um, and, and, you know, with digital transformation, really what we're seeing is that connectivity, that culture of innovation. So how do you keep on innovating um, throughout the organization? And, and that's what this masterclass is about, giving you those tools. Obviously, data is a new commodity. And, and so that database, data set, customer experience all combines um, and making sure it's in a secure network. So, you know, just another overview really is just that the, the CIO's priority is connectivity and security. We're looking at best practice as opposed to legislation. Um, and really it's about what are the trusted companies, not just in South Africa, but around the world doing. And so we're really grateful to have Hans on board who, who has that experience. Hans, um, you know, Cybertech obviously works with people like the UN, BMW, and a whole host of massive multinationals in Austria, Germany, and all over the world. So, you know, we're really grateful to get your experience and insights. And, and Ionita obviously is a program manager for South Africa and Africa. So she has practical insights in terms of what South African companies at the moment are looking for and how we can help them and how we're helping them at the moment. We've got a couple of polls. So we'll be asking you some questions, get your mind ticking over. And obviously, you know, just to guide you through this conversation, it's really about, you know, how do you gather specs quicker? How do we build database apps quicker? How are we converting free roaming Excel sheets for professional data apps? And how are we moving from Apex to open source faster? So those are the key sort of learnings, takeaways that we want you to take away today. Um, the, like I said, the Q&As um, keep it positive. And Africa Tech Week is obviously going to be virtual in March next year. So that's me. Um, and it's over to the brains of this uh, forum, uh, Hans. Uh, obviously, I need is the looks. And um, yeah, I'm the host. So over to you, Hans.
So good afternoon, everybody. Thank you for uh, for showing up to uh, to this event. Uh, Ross, can everybody see the screen? Presentation. It's looking really good. Yeah. Oh, wonderful. Yeah. Thank you. So thank you, everybody, for uh, showing up uh, to this fourth event um, here at uh, at Topco. Uh, today, I want to introduce you to something we, which is called the uh, Cypex, which is a rapid application uh, development thing, which I'm going to uh, show to you in a moment. Uh, first, let me just uh, quickly introduce uh, the company. We've been in professional uh, database work for 20 years, and we are basically doing a lot of uh, PostgreSQL related uh, open source database work. We are in the area of data science, uh, meaning uh, machine learning, um, BI, etc. And uh, what we noticed uh, in the past is that there are some things which, uh, which have to be provided to the market because they're obviously missing. But uh, let me just finish uh, quickly um, about the introduction here. So we're an international company where our headquarters is here in uh, Europe, in Austria, but we also got additional offices in uh, Switzerland, Poland, uh, Estonia, Uruguay, uh, of course, South Africa and Mauritius. So we are perfectly capable of serving uh, the African market from within and uh, provide basically all the services uh, needed uh, to get things going quickly and efficiently. So we also got a couple of high-ranking uh, customers, uh, which you might uh, know depending on, on uh, how familiar you are with some of the brand names. Uh, for example, one of our customers is uh, Amazon. We used to work for Skype, uh, working with Nokia, Siemens, and some other big companies uh, you might know, such as, uh, such as Porsche and so on. We've been around for, for 20 years. And uh, as I said, we're specializing on database work and, and database engineering in general. So. First question, why would anybody want to use Postgres in the first place? Uh, if you're not familiar with uh, the technology, uh, Postgres is one of the, of the uh, fastest growing uh, technologies uh, in the world. Uh, we, we saw that on Amazon, Postgres is by far the, the, the fastest uh, growing application. And there is a quite famous website out there. It's called uh, DB Engines. And it has uh, basically um, a ranking of database engines and their popularity. And what you see is uh, that uh, the acceptance of, uh, of Postgres is, uh, is, uh, is, uh, is, quick, is picking up uh, quickly. And uh, at the same time, we also see that uh, the, the more commercial database systems, such as uh, Oracle, MySQL, MS SQL, are basically stagnant. And Postgres is rapidly picking up uh, in order to replace those uh, commercial uh, databases out there on the big scale. We've basically seen it in all major companies that uh, Postgres is picking up and uh, basically a lot of migration is, is going on. So when it comes to software development, uh, the way we see it, there are some uh, eternal uh, challenges uh, people are facing uh, when uh, when going for uh, for uh, for software development, and uh, one of those etern some of those eternal changes are the ones which I would like to to show you as part of this uh, of this webinar. And the most the single biggest problem in software development, the way I see it, is information loss. So imagine you're going to a customer, he's gonna, he has a model of how things are supposed to work in his head. But the question is, how do you transport this knowledge to the developer? So on the way, you have the customer, you got the key account manager, you got project leaders, you got team leaders, there are specifications floating around, so all kinds of, uh, of things. So at the end of the day, the developer has a simple question and the way information is flowing is just totally distorted because you translate it from the customer's brain to a piece of paper, to the key account manager, to the project leader, and so on and so on, and all the way back. And then, surprise, surprise, the end product you're going to see is not what you want. What a surprise. I mean, if you tell 60 people in a sequence what you want to have for dinner, it's certainly not going to be what you have in mind, right? And the same is, 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 is going to be true for a way more complicated uh, product than software. So of course you can throw more manpower at the problem, but the intrinsic situation is always that information loss is gonna kill, um, is gonna, is, uh, is gonna kill um, uh, those, uh, those situations. In general, it's an intrinsic problem. 
So what we tried to do here at, uh, at, uh, at Cybertech with Cypex is to basically to, to sideline as many people as possible and just try to stick with the ones who really matter. And who really matters is the customer and the consultant who tries to extract the information from the customer in the most reasonable way possible. Of course, you might want to add a design guy at the end to make it more beautiful, to have nice colors and stuff like that. But basically, the key focus is get rid of people who do nothing but translate and lose information. We want to get rid of those people as quickly as possible, which, of course, translates to lower development costs and which, of course, um, guarantees that software development is going to be faster and more efficient just be because we are able to cut out so many people who are not coding, who are not uh, almost so not working, but who are not basically either producing code or providing information as a customer is able to do it. So that's the key idea, which I would consider that the biggest uh, challenge in software development is transporting the content of the customer's brain to the code side. Everything in between uh, has to be streamlined in my judgment. So, of course, people have tried to be agile and development and sprints and blah, blah. And um, I heard a nice quote the other day where somebody said, we don't know what we want yet, but agile development already allows us to get started. All right? You have no clue what you want, but let's start coding. You know? So, of course, this is a lot better than the traditional approach, but still it's flawed by definition because it's still everything is between the scrum master and his developers, but where in this equation is the customer? So for some reason, those, those wonderful things the customer wants that just fall from heaven and the whole thing stops with uh, scrum managers and, and, and 10 layers of developers. So we're still not where we want to be. We have to focus on the customer and everybody else in between is a burden, right? So that's what we want to achieve here. So how can we basically achieve this goal of having faster development? And the idea is to have a standard interview process which instantly translates to a prototype. So if you talk to the client in a specific way, which, which, we, which, we, which we try to do, uh, the way that this conversation with the client is structured, that it basically allows somebody using the tool chain to come up with a prototype which is good enough for the customer to feedback. Let me give you an example. I was talking to a company in Switzerland the other day and they asked them, is the price of pork linear? So meaning one pork, price X, two porks, two times X, 10 porks, 10 times X. And they said, yes, the price of pork is linear. And they asked them, if you buy a million pieces of pork, is it a thousand times as expensive as buying a thousand pieces of pork? And he said, of course not. And the, question, and the question I instantly had was, what does it depend on? Well, it depends on if we know the sales guy, it depends on how old the pork is, it depends on whatever. So if you were stuck with a standard classical paper specification, you would have two input fields, number of porks, price per pork. But in reality, you need 500 input fields, depending on some strange parameters. So obviously, having this standard approach to typing up uh, um, specification by somebody who has no clue about how to procure pork on a grand scale is going to lead to failure because imagine you're going back to the customer half a year later and all you've got is two input fields like number of, of animals and price per animal they're going to kill you on the spot because they're instantly going to figure out that you've no idea how to procure pork which is true but that's not the point you're supposed to deliver software. You're not supposed to be an expert on pork procurement, right? Just to make an example here. So we basically, as soon as the client is able to see something, see and touch something, the problem is solved. Because it allows you to save on months of, of mutual hate, rehearsal, recoding, stuff like that. We have to make software development and especially prototypes so cheap that changes don't matter. That has to be the goal, okay? So how can we achieve that? How can we do that using, uh, using this technology? Uh, first of all, as I said, everybody between the customer and the developer has to be cut out. So obviously it's an interactive sort of interview process which leads to, uh, which leads to the application. And the way we do it is by having a data 
data-centric approach. And with this data-centric approach, what we do is basically we predict the application. So what we do is uh, we take the data model. Of course, somebody wants, uh, you know, you, we have an address and we've got to send a newsletter. We have prices and categories and then and, and, and t-shirts can be yellow and, and we sell them in packages and there are discounts. So people are going to throw um, those requirements at you in, in a normal, let's say, type of conversation. What we can do extremely quickly during the, uh, the, the first discussion is to have a, a sort of model of the data, how, what data is going to look like. And on top of this data and workflow information we can extract from the customer during the conversation, we can actually predict an application. That's nothing like the end product is going to look like, but at least the customer is going to see. Because going back to our pork, the customer would see, okay, there are just two input fields. It's fields. And he would instantly say, that's not what I want, but we're going to figure out in five minutes and not in five months. Right? When all the prices are set, when everybody starts to be angry, when the first bugs come in. So basically, you figure out that nothing is the way you like it when you're already behind schedule, when you're already overpriced, and when everybody starts to hate each other. Right? So that's, that's basically the basic idea. So to predict the application and uh, to basically make sure that we get, in, we get feedback instantly. So catch the customer early on. What does it mean? Does a customer have one address or many addresses? Once you've written an offer, are you allowed to change it? Who can make the change? How do you change prices? Uh, what happens if interest rates are negative? So those are all things we have to extract from the customer. And this is what we use basically to predict the application. Okay, that's the basic idea to cut out as many people in between as possible. And then once we are over, uh, we're over that filter, we can basically make the application nice. We can add pie charts. We can add, uh, replace, uh, replace tables with, uh, with sliders or have drop downs instead of tables or have maps instead of lists and things like that. But then it's already clear how things are going to look like. So the standard interview process is all about clarity make sure that the customer has a clear picture in his head. Those people I interviewed about pork know everything about pork because they're killing a million of those, of those animals a year. They know how to process pork. The problem is they don't know it in the way we as software developers need it. The Aborigines in, 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 uh, in Australia know exactly how the bush works. works. They just don't know don't have it in the format Western scientific process would, would use it, right? So that's basically what it is. Clients have the information, we just have to extract it in, a, in an organized and civilized way. And we have to keep in mind that the customer is your friend, not your enemy. The customer is the source of information. It's not the nasty bug, uh, bugger who's going to torture you with uh, changing specifications and stuff like that. He's the source of information. So you have to value this source instead of fighting with the source because they already bargained on the price. Right? So that's certainly not what we want. So intelligent application prediction means that based on this information we've just uh, extracted, we can basically predict the application and then make modifications to make it more beautiful, change colors, add pie charts, add maps you know, restructure the menu, stuff like that. But basically, we have enough information that people can feedback already on that one. So, here are the basic steps. Start with a data model. You add workflow information. You add security definitions, like all the bookkeepers are allowed to see bookkeeping. All the construction people are allowed to see, I don't know what, the content of the warehouse. All marketing people are allowed to see the calendar, et cetera, et cetera. So that's how I do that. We predict the application. We figure out that it might not be perfect, so we can easily do something new, change it instantly, and then we customize the layout. And if, for God's sake, something is still not right, we can repeat the process as long as we want. Right? But the idea is really to have a very fast feedback cycle here. Um, talking minutes, not days or weeks. We've seen software projects which took five years and the output was basically zero, right? 
how, how can this happen? I mean, that, that's how, how can it happen? You know, it's like going to the kitchen, you want to make a pizza and after six years, uh, six weeks, you starve to death because you couldn't agree on the specification that you had to wait for your project manager and then you had to do whatever, right? Nobody, nobody's going to accept the fact that pizza takes six weeks, even if it's not perfectly uh, specified. Nobody specifies the number of mushrooms on the pizza, but still for some reason the project is nice, right? So obviously there is a basic flow in the, the very, very basic flow in the way software is done at this point. Feedback is key. Nobody is ever going to understand a thousand pages of specification. So even assuming that your specification is perfect and a thousand pages long, if I was a project leader facing a thousand pages of documentation or specification, I have no chance whatsoever to, to fully understand what's going on there. So paper is maybe not the solution. So predict the up, add pages, add graphical elements, adjust the theme, and then you have the final uh, product here. So this is what an end product might look like. And what you see here, uh, we have a birthday application. So whose birthday is next? How old are those people? Uh, when is it going to happen, etc. And we are already knee deep in our graphical editor. So basically this application uh, in the background, I think it's just two tables or something like that. Um, it starts off as, as a simple application with lists and, and stuff like that. But then somebody decided, okay, the content of this list is not a list, it's a pie chart, right? And we don't care about the next date of somebody's birthday we want to know okay okay it's, it's in 11 days right so it's relative not absolute then we want the line chart and maybe we want to add google maps where are those people having birthday where are they going to live or you might have some text field which just uh, decorates uh, graphics a bit more nicely right so this is basically how you would work on the on the final product and here's a bit more just to show you you can add a button, which calls some function to do something, maybe add an entry, maybe recalculate, maybe redraw the screen. Or here we got a simple case where somebody uh, wants, to, wants to add some change, what well, basically wants my change to be displayed in front of every to-do item just on the fly. Or here we got a couple of pie charts. Or here, somebody has a URL, so an image URL in the table, but you don't want to know the URL, you want to display the, the real image. So you can tell the thing, okay, this is an image, please get the picture, display the picture instead of the link, stuff like that. Or here is again, uh, changing menu entries, you know, changing um, the way table looks like. So this is basically what it looks like in real life, uh, how you build the application. But again, it starts as a standardized uh, um, interview process. That's basically how it works. So there are some tutorials on YouTube. Uh, we're going to expand on those uh, as we speak. Uh, there's going to be a lot more visual content on, on YouTube in, in the very near future. Uh, we're producing a lot of this content every day at the moment. So to make sure that, first of all, we don't want you to dig into specifications to build an application, but we also don't want to force you to dig into tons of paper to getting started with the tooling, right? So we also want this to be in a visual way and we're gradually gonna expand on this, on this stuff um, over, over time. So there's gonna be a lot more content than there is currently available there. So is that, I mean, Hans, that's pretty awesome. I'm thinking, can I give it a dig or would I have to do some sort of coding? Um, well, there is no such thing as, there is no such thing as no coding, you know. If you want to calculate the interest rate of whatever real estate risk, etc., there is no such thing as no coding. But let, let's remember, you, you have an application to store bookings for a hotel, right? You have to have prices, tax rates, uh, how much is in stock, uh, who are your customers? What places do you have? Uh, you know, all those kinds of stuff. And there is one screen that has to be perfect. So the moment you enter the hotel, what the receptionist sees, that's most likely a handwritten, hand-optimized thing 
you know, we've perfect everything, super efficient, but that's 5% of your application. 95% of your application are usually just forms for prices and rebates and uh, minimum requirements and packages and bundles and discounts and validity and historical changes and audit and users and passwords and groups and stores, stuff like that. So 5% might have to be coded in a typical application. Like, interest rate calculation, weight coefficient, balance, whatever. But 95%, that's why you burn your money. You're not burning your money on this 10 line calculation to do interest rate. You're gonna burn your money on those 10,000 people writing the specification for interest payment cycle, whatever, on calendars, on tables, on stuff that is really pointless. I, had, I remember one thing in Europe where somebody had six implementations of a calendar in the same application. So obviously they were spending their resources on reinventing calendars. I think they had calendars 10,000 years ago and we're still reinventing them. There's a problem with that. And this problem is gonna cost you dearly. That, that's what's gonna cost you dearly in software development. Everybody reinventing stuff all over again. Right? So, so I, mean, sorry. I, I get the feeling that this gives a lot of power to organizations now and even startup entrepreneurs. So people are trying to reinvent themselves. And, and the way I look at it is that maybe I don't have to be a developer or learn developing myself, but maybe I could outsource some development work, 5% of that to someone who could assist me with this tool. But yes, it, and it's, and it's going to be also, it's going to be, you can have smaller teams because everybody's short on labor. I mean, try to hire 100 skilled developers. That, that's not going to be easy. Second thing is, suppose uh, I was in uh, Botswana, I think on 13th of March. Everything was perfect. Nothing went, was wrong. And I think I caught the last flight back to Dubai on 18th. That is five days. Within five days, the world has changed. Which also means between, within a couple of days, you have to put up legislation, you have to put up um, software development in order to handle the crisis. Just to track infections, stuff like that. You literally have to develop applications for a whole nation in days. And you have to do it, obviously, for millions of, 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 uh, of citizens. So if you go through paper specification, official procurement, selection of project manager, blah, 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 blah. I mean, you don't even get your, your, uh, your, uh, your paper right in five days. You have no chance whatsoever. And then somebody from whatever Pakistan comes along and uh, tells you that, uh, sorry, we are late, we didn't understand the problem, and by the way, today is a public holiday in Pakistan. No? <laughs> Unfortunately, we could not work because we're celebrating whatever. You know? You're dead, you know? literally dead. So it, 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 that's really an issue. So time is an issue, development teams is an issue, got to be crowd ready, funds are scarce, got to scale easily, and you have to get a handle on this technology. I mean, if you start with, uh, let's say, C coding, the first thing you would do is, is to dig over, uh, to dig through a couple hundred page manual. It takes years to be proficient. So even that is a problem in itself. Even if you got a skilled programmer who knows some technology very well, that does not mean that if you purchase him for one hour, that it costs mankind one hour to produce that. It cost them five hours because four of them were learning, right? So how can we cut out the learning curve? How can we cut out manpower? How can we cut out competence? How can we get rid of, of big workforces? How can we get rid of information loss? You know? We have to attack that all in concert. So it, it has to be a unified concept because otherwise you're only focusing on specific issues which are not gonna do you, do you good in the long run. Yeah? Is, is this solution almost like the great equalizer? Does it, does it give um, startups and mid-sized organizations the ability to now compete really quickly with traditional big business who can afford these big stack teams and skills and also technologies. Does this allow them to, on a very 
much small budget and very quickly able to compete and develop technologies that are far more impactful? That's the core idea. I mean, if you, if you have to handle, for example, internally, we have to handle conferences, right? So conferences means which ones are interesting, what's the sponsor packages available, which deal did we get, what, ha what do we have to ship, where then, where is the stuff, who is the carrier, who is going to go there, do we have the language skills, do we have the booth around, etc. There is no ready-made standard software that can do that. We obviously we have to produce it. But there are only 20 conferences a year, right? So why would you make somebody sit and write an application for that? So what's going to happen is there are going to be hundreds of Excel sheets floating around. A Google Docs document floating around. I remember one case for a government institution. They have 500 Excel and Access applications. Remember, just imagine somebody is going to marry and his name or her name is going to change. And you have 500 Excel sheets. That's going to break apart in minutes. And it's obvious that it's going to happen. So we're not talking about, let's say, replacing software in a car or replacing some high-optimized cell phone application. We're not aiming for, you know, some point-of-sale station type of thing, but we are aiming at those hundreds and hundreds and thousands of small business applications or little bigger business applications where somebody has to configure something, adjust prices, manage uh, terms of sales, you know, having something off standard. I was recently talking to a guy who's maintaining natural gas pipelines. So how much, how many natural gas management pipeline software packages for companies with 10 employees do you know? I would say zero. So this guy is too big for an Excel sheet, but also not able to buy something off the shelf. But he still has to maintain certification uh, for his pipeline stuff. He still has to manage labor re regulations, which are specific because it's a refinery and blah, blah, blah. There's nothing off the shelf. So this guy could maybe employ five programmers, which is not feasible because he's only 10 employees, right? Or he can just have one Cypex guy who just does this over a period of a couple of weeks and everybody's happy. We got a we got a question in the the Q and A already. Thank you, Sue uh, Nozenza. Um, and it, it says, "Hi, um, how do you communicate your idea to a developer in a more effective way?" I think we're all looking for that answer. But um, I, I think you've got some tools, and you mentioned there's a little bit of an interview process. Is it like a check off list that people? No, it's really like a process. Uh, we can do a set, I can give you a live demo in a couple of minutes once we are over that. And then I can give you a bit of an insight how this works, right? Okay. Uh, so also, uh, components. We have uh, ready-made components. For example, uh, imagine you're storing addresses. I've been a database engineer for more than 20 years. I have no idea how many incarnations of address tables I've made in my life? How many, how many times have I created tables for currencies, genders, units, addresses, locations, products, etc.? Everybody and his brother who is somewhat related to, to, to engineering or software has created those components hundreds times in his life. I'm so fed up with making calendars, I can tell you. Why does everybody do it again? So why not have ready-made components? This is a calendar, this is a user, this is a customer, this is a currency, this is genders, this is units, this is races, this is classifications, this is uh, products and components, etc. Of course you can modify them later on, but at least have a template to get started. You know, newsletters, products, uh, provinces, whatever, you know, stuff like that, basic stuff. So we have ready-made components, which are, uh, which are, um, which are, uh, which are uh, the thing here. So I just get in the, the results of the poll. So it says skills and costs are most important. That's exactly also one thing we're trying to approach. Speed is a consequence. Because if you don't have the skill, and if you don't have the money to do it, I mean, speed doesn't matter because it don't get anything done in the first place, right? So that's basically what it is. So we have a component library. 
um, we can change it on the fly as we see what's uh, being uh, needed there. Uh, also, Cypex comes with a built-in API. So if you don't like uh, the ready-made UI components, uh, basically what we can do is uh, is basically have a uh, just uh, add your own stuff and just go coding if you need something really fancy that doesn't happen to be there. Also important, we got uh, we uh, um, we got the uh, bug consistency, which means a lot of stuff is generated, so there's no chance for a mistake. Right, that's also quite nice, and uh, yeah, low development cost as always. So, typical concerns is it scalable? Is it only for dashboards? Is it only for workflows? First thing I want to point out nothing fits all, right? So, if you want to make a built in application uh, for, your, for your wristwatch, that's not the tool you're going to go for, right? So, if you want your own pages, your own stuff. At some point, you have to code. So if you have the, I don't know, risk factor of uh, meteorological lightning strikes in the sub-Sahara, I don't know what, you obviously have to code it up. Right? So there's no ready-made component for that. But it's a small, what, what we're aiming for is 90% of the effort. We're not trying to solve 100% every strange corner case related to you know, some, some high-level physics. We try to focus on the 90% and for all the rest, Write the plugin, do your own stuff, etc. Right? Can it scale? Yes, it does. So we're database people. I've done database work for 20 years. Everything I'm thinking about for for a big portion of my life is scalability. Does it work? Can it run concurrently? So that's intrinsic thinking of a database engineer. So you can trust the fact that as a database engineer. And as the one who has made many of those concepts uh, initially, one part of my brain is always on scalability, efficiency, um, data-centric correctness, etc. So this comes from database engineers who know how to handle billions of rows. So that's where we come from. So scalability is certainly a core thing we put into this stuff. So of course it's it's super nice. It has some nice architecture. It has database it's at the bottom, which is high availability. Then it's a little bit of middleware, and then of course it's uh, the applications rendered in the browser so that you can see it. Security: we can do central authentication. We can do local users. It's easy to deploy as containers. We do constant updates um, so that you're perfectly uh, safe on the security side. And of course you can integrate to, with other systems uh, depending on on how your architecture looks like. And how, how relevant is the security compared to your big systems that you develop for people like the UN and BMW? Is it, is it built on those security platforms or is it unique? We basically have to see security from two aspects. First thing is obviously not being compromised, uh, making sure that you can only see what you want or what you're supposed to see. Uh, obviously having standard components to integrate into Active Directory, etc. We just uh, we just put up what's uh, basically state of the art here. But there's a second thing of uh, related to security. If you donate one of your kidneys to somebody, being getting lost literally means that somebody's going to die. Right. So security is not only about oh I found your password. Security is also about is my data stored in a way that it's not going to vanish is it's high availability is there backup stuff like that so all those things such as backups etc that's all integrated into the concept you don't have to worry about because a backup is not something one should specify you know specific backup requirements i mean everybody needs it it should be there by default yeah. I mean, I don't even want to discuss this stuff. You know, it has to be there by yeah. default. I mean, it's, it's so essential that even, even think about, thinking about it and, and wasting paper on that is already a disgrace in my judgment. Yeah. I think, I think with the new Poppy Act coming into South Africa next year, it's a massive uh, thing that people need to be considering now with any application build. So if it's already built in, and I think it's based on the European standards already, there's a, there's a strong alignment to that. And it's going to be more and more. It's, it's not going to like this thing is going to vanish. You know, the horse carriage vanished. But data protection is not going to vanish because I cannot envision anything 
that does not involve data at some point. I mean, unless everybody is, is, is dying in a nuclear strike, there is going to be data forever, right? There is no such thing as a time with, uh, there is a time without a horse carriage. There might be a time without cars instead of the airplanes, right? But there's not going to be a time without data anymore. That's not going to happen. At least in my, in my brain, that's totally unconceivable that the world is going to run out of data. That's, that's not going to happen. Do, do you think there's going to be more focus on privacy than before? Yeah. 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 Every, so, every time you, you, you catch a politician hanging around with somebody who's not supposed to be seen, you will have more legislation on picture privacy and stuff like that. Okay. So, key learnings. Uh, gathering specifications more quickly, building database applications more quickly, uh, get rid of hundreds of Excel sheets roaming around in your company and destroying data quality and make sure that we have uh, a way to get off commercial systems such as Apex, etc. So, any questions? Yeah, I mean, from, from my side, how important is it even, like we were talking earlier, that it's equals the, level, the playing fields for SMEs and startups um, and mid-sized businesses. But how relevant is this solution for bigger organizations who maybe have got a, a, a you know other technologies that are quite expensive how relevant is this for them and why I, think they it's even, I think it's even more relevant for the big ones because first of all they have hundreds of applications they want to have a standard infrastructure i mean if you have excel sheets floating around in a in a huge organization it's even worse than for a small one because if you start up if you have five excel sheets you can somehow handle it because there's one person in charge but if you are an organization with 100,000 employees, a free floating Excel sheet is, is identical to information loss. That's equivalent. I mean, it, it, nobody's gonna know it. There is no access control, most likely. There is, you know, that, that's not the way you should go. I mean, it, I think it's even more relevant for the big guys. And, and I mean, looking at what's happening now, and we were speaking earlier, the, the GDP growth for the last quarter in South Africa decreased by 50, I think it's 51%. I mean, I need to, do you think in the South African and African context that organizations that you're speaking to, is this important to look at Very. something that's more relative to what the GDP rate is at the moment? Yeah, listen, at, at the end of the day, I mean, what is the most important thing at the moment? I mean, I think most organizations today must really, they must be cost effective. Okay, they must be cost effective. They must also still do skills transfer. They must still get apps out there to make the organizations, to optimize the organizational A output. So at the end of the day, um, what is the most important thing? I mean, um, this, this tool is absolutely amazing. I mean, you don't need major skills transfer here. I mean, if you've got the basic coding, you know, you've, you've done some Java development or whatever, you are fully equipped as a developer or a person to actually utilize this tool. So let's look at different organizations. I mean, how many organizations have an in-house dev team? I mean, most organizations have, okay? Or we're looking at new tech startups. I mean, those guys cannot afford, if you're a tech startup, you cannot afford to, to, to employ people that got like master's or PhD degrees. I mean, you are gonna start with some junior guys or at least mid, 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 mid guys. So the thing is, if you look at that from a cost effective side and still grant the opportunity for, for all the people out there to, to have start businesses or to still do application builds and to still optimize their businesses, this is definitely the tool to have. And the nice thing about this, this is not an arm and a leg, all what this is, it's an annual license that you buy from Cybertech, you know, so you can, you, can, you can build applications through the year to your heart's content. So, I mean, it's really, really worth it. Absolutely. Um, and then if I may add from a project and program manager point of view, I mean, I've been managing projects that's millions of rands. Okay. Mm -hmm. And I mean, at the end of the day, if you look at this process, yeah, this can actually cut down on so much of your project time. It can cut down on so much cost. You don't need all those, those, those resources. You don't. You, like Hans says, you literally need one person, okay, with a tool in front of him, uh, and then maybe, and maybe a business person, you know, more maybe like a, I won't say a project manager or a program manager, but, you know, just with... Interview partners. 
you know, for, 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 for just fluent conversation between the business and IT. I always believe there must be some integration person there. <laughs> it just sure, makes sure. it more um, sufficient. But shall, the we thing real, is, uh, shall we build a real application? Yeah, and show, show them. So we let's, let's, do it, uh, let's do it in a way that everybody gets the point that this is real. Maybe we take somebody from the audience, a volunteer from the audience, and we build somebody's oh. application we've never seen before. Yes. How does so, it sound? That sounds fantastic. So now you will see just by talking to Hans, give him a quick, quick, quick info. He's just going to ask questions and the business just answers. Okay. So Zenze, um, can anybody step forward? Do we have a volunteer of? Yeah, I was thinking Zenze, because she obviously did ask the question about how to communicate to developer and we have one right here so that she can practice. It's, it's a yeah, good option. Okay, can we, can we basically, uh, can she turn on sound? Is that feasible? Yeah. Yep, we can invite Zenze. Okay. So then, so let, let me share my screen in the in the meantime. <laughs> because you want to put some weight onto this, right? So Absolutely. because otherwise everybody says that's perfect, that's brilliant, right? But we want this to be real. Yes. So whoever wants to participate, speak to me. Nuzenza. Yes, I'm listening. I'm here. Hello. What kind of application do you want? Um, should I choose on the ones that I see on the screen? Take whatever you want. Okay. Can you take that one that you don't like the most, the calendar one? Ah, uh, calendar. Okay. Let's do. <laughs> let's do two, two items. Okay. Let's do something like two two items. Is that okay. fine with you? Okay. Let me just. So. We are talking about to-do items. So mm -hmm. obviously we need a table to store that and it needs a... Okay, so um, what do we, tell me something about to-do items. What, what do you want? Uh, let's suppose to you have two, two items. items. Yeah. Um, transport, economics. <laughs> Transport economics. Okay, let's, let's suppose we do a small to-do list, like your, your Did you hear me correctly? Yes. So Zin says, I think you were saying what, a to-do list. So what, what would be on your to-do list? Would it be like personal, business, project management? It will, be, it will be business. Okay, let's maybe be a bit more flexible here and do a mm -hmm. task type, right? So it could be personal, it could be business, right? Yes, I so, choose business. Yeah, let's do a let's do a timestamp so that we know when you edit the item, right? Mm -hmm. Then we have a due date. Is that fine with you? Sorry, I didn't quite catch that one. Uh, there is a due date, so when does it have to be finished, right? So is okay. it private or business, right? So when did you edit? Okay. Then mm -hmm. uh, when do you want to be done? Then you want to specify the task and then maybe there is a description, right? Mm -hmm. Is that feasible of you? Okay, I see it's a... Uh, you, 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 it's so many small, small letters. Okay, yeah, yeah, it's, it's a, a business. Big, I got a it's big a, screen, yeah. Uh, yeah, it's a business, ne? And uh, I want to do it, let's say, on the 17th of October. Okay. Um, yes. Should I specify yeah. what type of a business? Uh, yeah. Let me just say, okay, your first task is a business task. Mm -hmm. Business task. We just edit it now, right? So it, it has to be done. I don't remember the date you said, but you said, I think you said October, something like that, 20th? Yes, yes. 17 October. 17, right? No problem. 17 of October. What's the task? Go shopping. The task is launching, launching a ticket. Something like this? Launching a ticket. Oh, launching, launching, okay. Yes, yes. Let's say launching a mobile ticket. Let's say that. That's the description already, right? So uh, let's, uh, let's, uh, let me add some more data quickly, just that we can see something a bit later. Okay. I'm just uh, feeling free here to 
launch a campaign. That's already the data. That's not the application anymore. We just want to see something in the, in the UI later. On. <laughs> okay. So then, of course, uh, that's uh, that's the first thing, right? So second thing is we also have to do some private stuff. Mm -hmm. Right. Private stuff is going to be on 11th and it's going to be date hunts. Bring some flowers, right? Is it fine with mm -hmm. you? Okay. Yes, it's fine. <laughs> So, so what, what you are doing now, what are you, are you capturing data? Yes, I was capturing your to-do list, basically. What I did here okay. was I, I mean, this, <laughs> I, I'm just using this command line tool because I'm, I'm more efficient on the command line. You would have a graphical editor for okay. that. I just want to do it because we only got 10 minutes. Okay. So here we captured some free tasks uh, with due date, etc. So let's go into the UI part. Let me just create your application from scratch. It's a to-do list and then it's Nozena's to-do up, right? Yes. Perfect. Mm. And then, of course, I'm just doing this a bit more quickly. Okay because I have to be done in less than 10 minutes because otherwise I cannot brag about it. Yes. <laughs> so then, of course, we want to see this data. Right. So then we are signing some permissions. So I am allowed to insert, update, delete, and modify this stuff. Okay, so I just did some, some background and then we can make your application. How does it sound? Let's make your application. <laughs> your to do up. So we're gonna own it and then we're gonna generate the application, right? Here we are. And here is your application. Okay. Is this the one, the one that written model, model good and you object you? That one. Uh, that I'm yeah, right. can you, I can barely hear her. Can you repeat, Ralph? Hey. Yes, yeah, sorry. We, we the, couldn't quite the, hear you. So, Zenza, maybe. Can I go on? Uh, it's, I think the line's quite bad. Could you put it in the chat or, or? Let me put it in the chat. Okay, in the meantime, mm. I'm going to create a, um, a pie chart for her. So you put in the chat in the meantime, and I'm going to create a nice uh, chart for you. It's going to be... Create a chart in the meantime. So I'm going to create a nice chart in the meantime, which is going to be like this. You are going to love to read that. Right. So, so what you saw here is basically I generated uh, the application for you and now we want to make it cooler, make it more sophisticated. So maybe we go to this application editor and we say, okay, you want the pie chart, right? So we want to select. Welcome to your app. Okay. Task, count, so here's the pie chart already has live data and maybe you want it to be a donut 
and maybe you want the title there or maybe you want something else here like you want the button so this is the dashboard you're building now from the data set that you've collected right Hans? absolutely this is already real data you can see she has two business tasks and one private <laughs> So maybe she also wants some, I don't know what, some table or something. Let's put in a table. Where is my table? Can anybody see the table? Or a due date. You could also have something for a due date as well. Yeah, like an input date or whatever. I mean, I think you get the point that we can uh, quite quickly produce something here. So let's put a name, chart, task, count. Here is your data already, right? Okay. So we can save it. That's it. That's your first application. Nice. So if you look, if you log into this URL, you can even see it live, but that's how it works. Okay. Ralph, no. do you see it's so easy to use. It's very user friendly. Yeah. yeah, and it was nine minutes. I was two minutes late today. I <laughs> firmly apologize for wasting your time. <laughs> <laughs> this is extremely user friendly and it's so fast to build up, you know, especially when, when you, obviously when you have a business meeting with a client, obviously they will have some homework already, you know. So, and if you can just, mm -hmm. just pass that on, and I mean, this can easily be uh, just edited and it's there. The nice thing for me is, I think the most important thing here is when you're done with the business requirements with the client, you literally turn around the screen and the proof of concept's ready. Okay. I mean, that's amazing. I mean, now it was just nine minutes. Uh, you have to keep in mind that uh, usually a, a specification takes a bit longer. The interview process is not going to be nine minutes if you have a long application, of course, but it's not going to be weeks and hundreds of pages. So. I think the, the the point I want to really bring over is that it's 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 a lot faster than you would usually do it. So I think Ralph yesterday we how much how long did you take? Seven minutes? Seven minutes. But, but, I, think but the, I, I didn't find the password for three minutes. So So I think critically though, like like you've shown, there's about a, an eighty percent reduction in time. And what that re refers to is not just the time of building, but the time of the developer's time to build. Everything. Then you have the satisfaction from the customer, which they're looking for, that customer experience is enhanced. And most importantly, you're able to create impact for the customer immediately. You're able to see, based on this proof of concept, is it something that you feel would work for you? Yeah, yeah. But the thing is, um, also, Rolf, the thing is now, the proof of concept's ready, okay? When it's visually there in front of the client, the client turned around and said, I don't know, this is not really what I was looking for. I was more looking for that look and feel, or I was more looking for this, you know? So that is so nice because this proof of concept is real time. It's there. It's with you. You just turn around the screen and show the client, you know? And it's just there. Notice that, it's there. This, that this table is too big. We can make it smaller if you want. Yeah. I mean, you mentioned earlier, Anita, you said that, um, you know, you can develop to your heart's content. Is... is I mean, a lot of people at the moment, they're saying they're under pressure time-wise, they're doing all these things, they don't have time. And, and one of the most frustrating things I hear executives say is that people say they're too busy. Does this now free up people enormously to then look at not one idea, but 10? Absolutely, absolutely. And, and the thing is, the nice thing, like I say, the tool, you just pay a yearly license. You can use, use this tool over and over and over. Like Hans now just quickly did this one app now. He just saves it. And it gives it to the client, you know. So you can use this tool over and over for the whole year because you've got access. It's a license that you pay. So, and the thing is, it frees up resources tremendously. So, okay, awesome. Hans, you're a bit of a genius there. Um, oh, thank you, Rolf. You got paid to say that. <laughs> <laughs> I also get messages about it as well. So, <laughs> yeah, it's not just me. Um, so, I mean, we, we want to share this through our platform, but you've also got those tutorials that we can link people to as well afterwards so they can go and do these things for themselves. Because I think there is a, there is a sense that you are, 
you know, you're very competent at this and, and some of us feel probably not as able as you. And so those tutorials obviously give us some help. What yeah, you sure, did well, now well. is something that was very quick and easy. For a normal person like me and I need to, it would probably take us, what, an hour to figure out something like this a little bit longer? Yeah, you need a little bit of database skill because here in order to do this pie chart, uh, you have to be able to write uh, some aggregation. So how do you want to process this data? But this is something you can learn in days and not, not, not years. You know, in order to become a proficient coder, you need years. In order to, to learn how to write this type of query, it's going to be a week or something like that. For sure. Okay, and then obviously in terms of like pricing and those sorts of things, we can, and just, we can share yeah, we with just you reach out we will make nice be. arrangements for you and also for a start we will also of course help you with building those applications because we cannot just put you in front of the tool and expect mir miracles to happen so obviously everything comes with a little bit of guidance yes okay so there will be tutorials and there will be help yeah. yes has to help be because start. otherwise it's it, it, it's going to be boring yeah. for sure okay thank you so um, it, it was, it's great to get these demos and we, we were talking afterwards about doing some sort of a hackathon on this, but um, it's been very enlightening to come to this point. So thank you, Hans. Thank you. You're welcome. Anita. And thank you, Innocenza, for sharing your, your time to, to build the up. <laughs> we thank shamelessly you. abused you here. <laughs> thank you, <Mark. laughs> Put you forward. So thank you all very much. Um, we'll, be, we'll be sharing this obviously in the chat um, and we, we're sharing it to those who registered. So thank you so much. Thank you, Anita. You. Thank you, Hans. See you.